In today's lesson, we're going to load data with an ETL process into our Planet Toys data warehouse. Now, in previous assignments, we created this data warehouse um, and it is presented in front of you. Um, if you have not yet loaded this data warehouse into your database structure, um, go back to previous assignments to make sure that you get that implemented appropriately. Now, what's also um, a key part about this um, tutorial today is that we need a, this is our destination database or data warehouse, and we also need a source. So our source is actually this uh, counting database. And let me put all the tables in view. And um, you should have already attached um, this accounting database um, to your um, to also to your instance. So on the left hand side you should see the Planet Toys accounting database and also uh, the Planet Toys uh, data warehouse. Now our goal um, is to be able to load data um, into the data warehouse from the accounting database. So uh, basically we want to take the data and then transport it here. Now the reason why we want to do this is because in um, our data warehouse, we it is designed in a way where we can look at the manufacturing um, events that have taken place in terms of what products are being made, how long it is being produced, what how many parts are accepted, how many are rejected, etc. So uh, when we look at the accounting database, we have some tables that will automatically go direct into the data warehouse. Some of those tables are the product subtypes, types, and the products themselves. However, some of the other tables like countries, locations, and capital assets have a lot of extra fields that we're not going to use. So when you get a chance, you can look at the database diagram that we have for our data warehouse and look at the fields that are included here, as well as um, what would be the matching fields that would go that would come from the uh, counting database. Now, if you'll look close enough, you'll also take you should take note that the um, batch dimension table um, right here does not have any matching data that comes from the accounting database. And what we're going to do is load this from a CSV file. So um, I just wanted to introduce these two uh, data base diagrams and data warehouses to kind of get a prelude into what we're doing. But to complete this exercise, what we're actually going to do is we're going to get into uh, Visual Studio. So um, on your computers, um, go ahead and start up Visual Studio. And in this case, I'm using Visual Studio 2019. Now, just as a note, um, you need to be able to use Visual Studio um, in an environment that allows, the, in the same environment that you're using SQL Server Management Studio, where the connections to your um, server instance is available. All right, so today we're going to work on um, basically the loading of the dimension tables um, uh, of the product. So uh, we're going to start from scratch. So we're going to create a new project. Okay. And Visual Studio is really designed to be able to do multitudes of things. And we're going to only work on an ETL project. So if you scroll down, you will see projects, uh, a variety of different projects. The one that we're interested in is an integration services project. Now, what I want to be cautious of is that you do not, um, bad, you do not use the Insure enabled for this exercise. We're going to only use the integration services, the very plain Jane one. So let's select on that and hit next. So for this exercise, I'm going to rename uh, the project uh, with my last name. I would recommend you do the same for you. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, PTI, and I will call it a data load 
um, exercise. So uh, data load, and I'm just going to put an underscore um, ex. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we save this in a location that we can find later. So one of the things to be uh, cognizant of is where this location is. So uh, make sure that you um, select on these little three ellipses right here, and we will um, find the proper location. Now, for um, CIS 3060 and perhaps other courses, you may have a different location. Uh, but we are using CIS uh, analytics dot ITS uh, dot app state dot edu. Now, um, currently, I am uh, going to use uh, CIS 00. This is mine um, as the instructor, but you are assigned to something else, so make sure that you select your appropriate folder. And you can see that when I open this, I'll have multitude of different folders and uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it PTI um, data load underscore EX okay. and I'm going to select folder all right now the next thing and it may not be a default for you um, and also, I noticed that there is a, uh, well, I did that accidentally, I think. Um, make sure that this checkbox here is checked. Um, if it is not checked, what will happen is the solution will end up being uh, basically stored in a different directory as your folder. And we want to keep everything self-contained in case we want to move it around later. So once you have that information in, put into the configuration box, go ahead and create, and it'll take a, a few seconds here, perhaps a minute or two, and we'll be able to create our um, integration services project. Okay, so I paused uh, for a moment and let my um, uh, Visual Studio go ahead and load the project for me. So there's a little bit of jump in the timeline here. But what I wanted to illustrate to you in this particular um, integration services um, workspace, we actually have um, you know four areas that we're going to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, the first is over here on the left, there is an SSIS toolbox. And it's going to have a variety of different tools that we will use. And one of the tools that we're going to make use of in the control flow is going to be a data flow task. Okay. This is going to be something that we're going to do quite frequently. Um, however, given that the scope of this class is just a, an introduction, um, using these other types of tools, we probably actually we won't get into all right so another uh, thing that we're gonna uh, want to use is this workspace here and how we use this workspace is we simply um, click and drag um, uh, a tool from the toolbox into this workspace so I'll click and drag uh, the data flow task into the workspace and you'll see it load up all right, so this is going to be one of our tasks. We're going to come back to that shortly. Another area that we're going to want to pay attention to is over here on the right-hand side. It's the uh, Solution Explorer for um, our project. And uh, we can see a variety of different folders here. The, uh, the things that we're going to be most, um, pay, I guess, most involved with is going to be the packages the, and the connection managers and as well as the general properties for our project. Okay. And then the last thing is down here is our connection managers. And we're going to see as we connect to databases what's going to happen. And if you're into troubleshooting, the error list and the output here will also give us some assistance. Hopefully, uh, following the instructions that are given here, uh, you won't need that too much. Now, if you need to move some of these windows around, you can. 
uh, like for example you can always um, unpin certain windows and it will remove them uh, whatnot and those are some different ways of being able to uh, customize your workspace a little bit all right so if you haven't done so already go ahead and click and drag that data flow task into the workspace and we'll get started on this uh, tutorial in the next video